For centuries, humans believed the universe to be a straightforward and orderly place. Earth was seen as the center of existence, with the sun, stars, and other celestial bodies revolving around it in perfect harmony. This view was shaped by our natural tendency to place ourselves at the center of everything. As our understanding of the universe progressed, we embarked on a transformative journey. This journey led to the revelation that we are part of the vast Milky Way galaxy. The story of our cosmic exploration is one of determination, creative thinking, and scientific advancements that ultimately helped us discover our true position within this immense galaxy. To understand our galaxy's true structure, it's imperative to start with the night sky. It offers our first clues, showing us a faint, glowing band of stars, a celestial ribbon we recognize as the Milky Way. This band suggests that we live within a flattened disk rather than a spherical structure. If our galaxy were spherical, we would see stars more evenly distributed across the sky. The band bisects the night sky, indicating that we exist within its plane, not above or below it. Leaving this plane to fully view the Milky Way's shape is impractical, requiring travel of hundreds or thousands of light years perpendicular to the plane. Consider Voyager 1, the farthest human-made object from Earth. After nearly 50 years of space travel, it has only traversed about 0.02 light years, highlighting the immense scale of such a journey. This highlights the vast distances we would need to travel to fully observe the structure of the Milky Way. Despite the limitations in technology for direct observations, we were not deterred from determining the shape of our galaxy and our place within it. The first significant step in this endeavor was made in the 18th century by William Herschel, renowned for his discovery of the planet Uranus in 1781. Herschel was not only an astronomer, but also a cartographer of the cosmos. Using his handmade telescope, which enabled him to see deeper into space than anyone before him, Herschel undertook the bold task of mapping the stars of the Milky Way, a task no one had previously attempted. In the late 1700s, with the assistance of his sister Caroline, Herschel embarked on this ambitious project. Herschel divided the night sky into about 600 sections, meticulously cataloging the position and brightness of every observable star in these zones with relentless patience and precision. Using his telescope, he carefully mapped the stars onto a grid, leading him to propose that our galaxy had a disc-shaped structure. He also suggested that our solar system was near the center of this disc. However, Herschel's map was not entirely accurate due to his lack of awareness about interstellar dust, which obscures our view of stars in the Milky Way's central region. As a result, his map inaccurately showed the central region as less dense than it actually is. Despite these inaccuracies, Herschel's work was groundbreaking. His map was the first to suggest a disc-shaped Milky Way, providing crucial insights into the structure of our galaxy. To introduce the next pivotal figure in this narrative, we move from the 18th century to the 20th century, arriving at the Harvard College Observatory. There, a passionate astronomer with a deep interest in the cosmos was making extraordinary observations. Her discovery would forever transform the field of astronomy. In the grand story of cosmic exploration, every star has its role, as do the brilliant minds who strive to unravel the universe's secrets. Henrietta Swan Leavitt, an American astronomer, stands out among these trailblazers. Her remarkable contributions have profoundly enhanced our understanding of the cosmos and our place within the Milky Way. Leavitt's research focused on a special class of stars known as Cepheid variables. These stars exhibit a unique characteristic. They pulsate, varying in brightness over consistent periods. At the Harvard College Observatory, Leavitt's task of cataloging these stars led her to a revolutionary finding. 
she catalogued 1,777 variable stars. In 1908, she observed a direct relationship between the luminosity of these stars and their pulsation periods. Brighter sheaf hides pulsed more slowly than their fainter counterparts. This simple yet profound relationship, now known as Leavitt's Law, allowed astronomers to determine the distance to cephides by measuring their pulsation periods. Cephides were established as standard candles for determining astronomical distances. Leavitt's discovery provided astronomers with a method to measure distances up to 20 million light years. Now, you might wonder how this helps us understand our position in the Milky Way. To answer this, we need to introduce another key figure, Edwin Hubble. Before the 1920s, many scientists believed that the Milky Way was the only galaxy in the universe. Although we had captured images of what we now recognize as neighboring galaxies like Andromeda, these were thought to be star systems within the Milky Way. Consequently, most astronomers believed that the Milky Way constituted the entire universe. However, as telescopes became more advanced, some began to question this view. In developing this theory, astronomers began noticing an increasing number of vague patches in the sky that didn't resemble typical star formation regions in our galaxy. However, a significant challenge at the time was the lack of a precise method to measure the distances to stars. Stars vary greatly in size and brightness, making it difficult to accurately gauge their distances. One common approach involved estimating distances based on their apparent brightness. However, a large luminous star situated far away could appear as close as a smaller, dimmer star. This is where Henrietta Swan Leavitt's work became crucial. Leavitt had demonstrated that cephide variables could be used to determine distances to galaxies up to 20 million light years away. Inspired by her work, Edwin Hubble decided to measure the distance to the Andromeda galaxy by studying a cephide variable star within it. His findings sent shockwaves through the scientific community. He discovered that Andromeda was approximately 930,000 light years away, extending far beyond the confines of the Milky Way. Although Hubble's estimate of Andromeda's distance was only about a third of the currently accepted value, it was enough to confirm Andromeda's location outside the Milky Way, fundamentally reshaping our understanding of the universe. The revelation that Andromeda is a flattened disk of stars, similar to the Milky Way, sparked a fundamental question among astronomers. Where are we located within our own galaxy? This is where the work of American astronomer Harlow Shapley becomes crucial. Initially, Shapley believed that everything visible to us was part of the Milky Way, a belief that Edwin Hubble's research later disproved. In the early 1920s, Shapley adjusted his viewpoint and embarked on a diligent effort to catalogue galaxies, documenting as many as 1,249 in just six years. However, it was Shapley's work from 1914 to 1918 that proved pivotal in our quest to determine our position in the Milky Way. Armed with the powerful 60-inch telescope at the Mount Wilson Observatory, the most advanced instrument of his era, Shapley focused his research on globular clusters. Globular clusters are dense collections of stars, numbering in the hundreds of thousands or even millions, tightly bound together by gravity to form spherical shapes. These clusters are typically located above or below the plane of the galaxy and are among the oldest objects in the universe, with many dating back over 10 billion years. Shapley's meticulous observations unveiled a striking arrangement of these globular clusters in a spherical pattern around the galactic core, particularly concentrated in the direction of the Sagittarius constellation. This discovery carried profound implications. If we were situated near the Milky Way's core, one would expect globular clusters to be distributed across the entire sky. However, the majority of these clusters 
are predominantly visible near the galactic center, notably in the direction of the Sagittarius and Scorpius constellations. This pivotal observation challenges the earlier hypothesis proposed by William Herschel, suggesting our position not near the galaxy's center, but rather towards its outer arm. However, Shapley's calculations slightly overshot our actual distance from the galactic center. He estimated our position to be somewhere between 33,000 and 90,000 light years away. With advancements in modern astronomy, we've since refined this figure, pinpointing our solar system's location near a small partial arm called the Orion Arm, or Orion's Spur. This arm is situated between the Sagittarius and Perseus arms, approximately 26,000 light years from the heart of the Milky Way. The Milky Way, an elegant spiral of starlight spinning in the cosmic abyss, has often obscured our understanding of its grand design, vast composition, and our place within it due to the immensity of the task. Until now, enter Gaia, the European Space Agency's celestial cartographer, silently sailing across the cosmic sea, transforming our understanding of the Milky Way. Launched in late 2013, Gaia embarked on an ambitious mission to craft the most comprehensive and detailed 3D map of our galaxy ever conceived. Armed with the goal to survey approximately 1 billion stars, about 1% of the stars in our galaxy, Gaia has been tirelessly charting the cosmos. Gaia's mission allows astronomers to study the Milky Way as a whole, tracing its structure, dynamics, and evolution with unprecedented detail.